Well, that's bullshit. Just happened to have a trap door right there. The final delusion of a senile old mind. There's no way to destroy this Metal Gear Snake. Fox, where are you? Come and find out, Snake. Go through the front door. Okay, I will. Once I get my grenades equipped and my rations equipped. Randomly, for some reason, card four is the one that goes through. Whatever. Oh, oh my god, here it is! Finally, a proper Metal Gear battle! Not just gonna stand in place and let me kill it. Oh my god. Oh, that looks so cool. God, I want to see a 3D model of this thing so badly. Snake, I'm not the same as I used to be, and neither was Metal Gear. I'll show you what fear really is. Prepare to taste defeat. No! Ah! Holy shit! So, oh, he was telling the truth. Grenades do hurt the legs. This is a really enclosed fucking room. My god. What a cool idea though, Makajima. Seriously, for actually let us fight the goddamn Metal Gear. I bet it's something everybody wanted in the first one. An actual proper movie Metal Gear. Oh, am I gonna die? No, I've got my ration, it's fine. Now that I'm getting a much better look at it in the flesh, it definitely looks like a souped up version of the TX-55 from Metal Gear 1. That was the prototype. This is the complete final version. It is a little weird how it's so different from Sehalanthropus in MGS5, but I suppose you could chalk that up to the fact that Huey and Madnar are completely different when it comes to what they think looks cool for Metal Gear. And this is what Madnar thought looks cool. Oh my god, what? The cartridge is mine, Snake! Burn in hell! You fuck, Fox! You can't steal my game! All my stuff is on fire! What's happening? Snake, your items are on fire. Throw away all your weapons and equipment, quickly. Use the zero button. How are my weapons on fire, too? Even my cigarettes are on fire? That's nothing bad. Aw, oh, for God's sakes. I have to throw away my gun, too? Wait. What's... What else is on fire? I'll throw away the key? What? What else is on fire? I don't have anything else equipped, though. Oh, I had to use up all my rations too. Even my rations were on fire, hurting me. Uh-oh. Where am I? The perfect ring for a final battle. What? It's been a while, Snake. Here we are, back in the minefield. What do you say we go at it hand to hand? A chicken fight? No, a hand fight, you moron. The two greatest rivals in Foxhound. I've been waiting for this moment for a long time. Fox, I'll beat some sense back into you. Great Fox, real name Frank Yeager. Former member of Foxhound. He was the last man to hold the title Fox in the Big Boss Hero. Decorated five times. Yeah, I know all about how good he is. Better than anyone else. I fought with him. He's a cold blooded hunter. He never lets his prey escape. Everybody in the unit respected him, looked up to him, even me. That may be, Snake, but do you know about his past? Might help you. Ten years ago, we in the mercenary trade knew him as Hunter. That's what Jaeger means in German. Back then, he was involved with some woman from the Eastern Bloc. He tried to get her to come over the fence, but it all fell through. Apparently, the West wasn't interested in taking her. That's when Frank started to hate the Politicos. What was the woman's name? She was an Olympic skater snake. Her name was Gustava Hefner. Real fine woman, movie star type, you know? G Gustava Hefner. Snake, if you manage to beat Fox, I'll tell everyone that Solid Snake is the greatest mercenary in the world. Right after me, of course. Over and out. Oh my god, why are there mines everywhere? Of course, we fought in a minefield. I forgot, that's what Fox said in Metal Gear Solid 1. I didn't, I thought it was an actual outside minefield. I didn't realize it was like this. Okay, I'm just gonna do this. And if you get in the way, it's your own fault. Yeah, boy, I did it! I got you, Fox! I am the greatest in Fox Sound! I'm gonna take on the real codename of Fox. Solid Fox. Sorry I had to do it, but you turned crazy. Big Boss got to your head. You let him mess with you. Snake! Looks like it's finally time for me to give up the title of Fox. It really is. Fox, why? I'm not like you, Snake. My situation is more complicated. It sure is with your history with Big Boss. I can understand that point. Big Boss might have just been another CO to you, but he saved my life twice. This was way before I joined the unit. The first time, I was a half-white living in Vietnam. It was after the war, and half-whites were being sent into forced labor. Camps. <laughs> God, these weird speech bubbles make them a bit bigger. He saved me from the living hell, just like he saved all the children here. The second time was in Mozambique. I was being tortured as every name of soldier, and he saved me again. They cut off my ears and my nose. Oh my God. And this is your idea of paying him back? My God, Fox, you went through some shit. Your nose grew back, I guess? What the fuck? Oh, you've got it wrong. I hate war, just like all the kids here, but I need it. War is all we know, Snake. We can't make it in the normal world. We need the battlefield to survive. Big Boss gives us a place to fight. Conflict is in our blood. 
We can't deny it. I was born on the battlefield, and I'll die on the battlefield. All I can do is fight, Snake. All I can do is fight. Making people happy, making a woman happy, is something I can never do. You didn't need to kill Gustavo, though. That was bullshit. You mean. Guess I was always fated to die in action. Rest easy, Fox. I swear I won't turn out like you. I'll become a drunk hard who lives alone in Alaska instead. You won't turn out like me. I'll have to remember that as I die. Fight hard, Snake. Don't let your fans down. My fans? It was you, wasn't it? You were the voice in the radio. Call it payback for being so selfish. See you on the other side. Snake. You won't be alone, Frank. Gustav is waiting for you, and she's mad as hell. Thank you, Snake. We'll meet again, maybe, in the future. Ah! <laughs> Well, he won't be coming back for some sequels, I don't think. Oh, thank you, Fox. Poor Fox. He got his nose and ears cut off? Good God! I wish we got to see that in Phantom Pink. Over here, Snake! Oh, we know that throaty voice anywhere. You can only be one bastard. Big Boss. Looking really dapper in his beret. Big Boss. You're alive? Snake, welcome to Zanzibar Land. I knew you'd come back to me. I came to get rid of the nightmares I've been having for the past three years. You look really suave, Big Boss. A little bit tortured, though. The nightmares? They never go away, Snake. Once you've been on the battlefield, tasted the exhilaration, the tension, it all becomes part of you. Once you've awakened the warrior within, it never sleeps again. You crave ever bigger tensions, ever bigger thrills. As a mercenary, I think you would have realized that by now. You care nothing for power, or money, or even sex. The only thing that satisfies your cravings is war! All I've done is give you a place for it. I've given you a reason to live. I never would have made you for such a hypocrite, Big Boss. You saw those children, didn't you? Every one of them is a victim of war somewhere in the world, and they'll make fine soldiers in the next war. You're a psycho! Start a war, fan its flames, create victims, then save them, train them, and feed them back into the battlefield. It's a perfectly logical system. In this world of ours, conflict never ends, and neither does our purpose, our raison d'etre. So there's plenty of job opportunities, huh? Is that what you're trying to say? On the battlefield, you and I are valuable commodities, but back home, we're nothing but dead weight. If we're lucky, we might get the attention of some two-bit journalist from a cheap tabloid. You and I are doomed to remain here until we die like dogs on the battlefield. I've only got one fight left. To free myself from your grip, to rid myself of these memories, Big Boss, I will defeat you. It doesn't matter who wins here. Our fight will continue. The loser will be liberated from the battlefield, and the winner will remain. And the survivor will live out the rest of his days as a soldier. It doesn't have to be that way. I'm not like you. I love life. At least for now, I guess. Very well, Snake. I'll release you from your suffering. As your former commander, I'll do you one last favor and put you out of your misery. I don't need any more favors from you. Really? And just how do you expect to beat me in your condition with no weapon? Never give up. Fight until the end. Always believe you will succeed, even when the odds are against you. Those are your words. Even I make mistakes from time to time. Snake, this will be our final battle. Let's end this once and for all. Oh, okay, so hold on. I have nothing except the game cartridge with the microphone. So, ah, uh, what do I do? I, I can't, the fucking acid all over the place. Ah, big boss, come on. I never figured you to be such a pussy. This is unfair as fuck. I have nothing here. At least throw me a gun. I'm pretty sure if they remade this part in the future, like a remake, they would have Big Boss throw Snake a gun, because this is... this is weak. I mean, I know he's turned into a full-on demon now, but fuck. Big Boss? There's not a mercenary in the world who hasn't heard of him. He's like a god. A living legend. I already know all that. I need new information. Okay, okay. But this is only a rumor, understand? Three years ago, when Out of Heaven fell, Big Boss was seriously wounded. He almost died. He lost both hands, both feet, his right eye, and his right ear. Why just his right ear? But somehow, he survived. Then an Eastern Bloc despot took an interest in him. Probably couldn't resist getting his hands on a soldier of Big Boss's caliber. They decided to use Big Boss as a guinea pig in Madnar's Snatcher Project. Holy shit, really? I don't know the details, but apparently involved turning him into a cyborg. Now he's half man, half machine. Hard to believe, I know. But if it's true, Snake, you're way out of your league. None of your techniques going to so much as put a scratch on him. Snake, give it up. You're fucked. There's no way you can win this time. Just put a bullet in your head. I'm gonna do it right after I sign off. Over and out. None of these doors open? Oh. Picked up card one. Oh, look. I guess I have to go through the doors to find out which one's open. That's gonna take a while. Oh, he doesn't know where I am. Oh, he does now. Oh, oh. God damn it, big boss. Why'd you have to turn so goddamn fucking evil? 
Training kids and everything? What the fuck? You used to be a cool guy. Even in Ninja's 5, you were still mostly a cool guy. Oh, no. There we go. What did I pick up? Card 6. God damn it. Oh, fuck you. This is an extremely odd final battle. I would have preferred something where we both have guns to begin with and then we just fight each other full out, but... At least this is a novel idea, I suppose. Oh, hell. Where do I go? Oh, oh, no! No, the acid! That is so dumb. That is so dumb! It, it doesn't look like he's melting. It just looks like he sinks into the floor. You've gone crazy. You've gone out of your fucking... Oh, no, the acid again! You're so fucking pathetic, big boss. You could have been a hero. Well, because you made a mistake by killing the boss and it fucked up with your mind. It's your own fault. Shouldn't have listened to your government. Should have been more loyal to her than anyone else. Ah. I use the ration over the acid. It diffuses it, and then I go for card six. No? No? So which door does this open then? Oh, hell's teeth. Thank God the bullets don't travel into the next screen. Oh, there we go. There's nothing in here. Wait. Oh, for God's sakes. Why did you design it like that? Where the hell is Holly, by the way? She just... We've completely forgotten about her. I don't even know where she is right now. In fact, pretty much everybody's died, haven't they? Grey Fox, Gustava, Q Marv. Everybody's dead. Fuck off, you miserable... Fuck! Well done, boss. You managed to shoot an unarmed man to death. You're such a hero. Yes, careful with it. What's the acid? What's the acid? What's that? Lighter? That's exactly what we need to take him down. Well, that combined with something else. I don't know how the hell Kojima came up with this idea. He must have seen it in a film or something. A spray can. I'm not even joking with you. We're going to dig down Big Boss, the legendary mercenary, the greatest soldier of all time with a spray and lighter. How do I use it? Oh my word. I got you. Come over here. I got a fire. Yes. That's how you do it. I actually have a way more overpowered weapon than you do. Your gun actually looks like shit compared to my lighter. Wow, that does some serious damage. How the heck? You should have been more careful. If I could take you down with a lighter and a spray can though, you got to realize I'm probably the superior one by now. I have surpassed you. Oh no, not that. I was almost dead as well. Fuck. Oh no, not the fucking acid. I'm gonna go all MacGyver in his ass. Yeah, you go. Take it all, why not? You have gone insane and senile in your old age. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe just old age or something crept up on Big Boss and it turned him into a psycho because he was never this unhinged. But I guess using children in warfare kind of makes you a little fucked up to begin with. I'm afraid I'm going to get you this time. I have an inordinate amount of rations and you're just ready to be roasted. There you go. This was a long time coming, boss. Snake! It's not over yet! Ironically, he is now the man on fire. It's not over! Not over yet. Snake! Snake! Well, I'm pretty sure that means he's definitely dead and not likely to come back ever again. Good! We defeated the big boss of Outer Heaven Part 2, basically. I cannot see him ever making a full recovery from that. What? Oh, God! I have a gun on me. It's okay! It's me, Snake! Why did you say freeze, then? Holly, that wasn't funny. Did I scare you? Phew, that was a close one. So? What's going on? What are you doing here? Why is the text going so slow? You said to yourself, stay alive, and we'll meet again sometime. Why do I sound like Michael Jackson? So I did. Ugh, that uniform is too tight in the chest. Uh, I feel so much better now, don't you think, Snake? Take a look! Here, I stole this gun from the enemy. You can have it. Yeah, I can see how it'd be hard for a woman to use. Thanks. What? Ah, right, now come on now, Snake. So it's all over now, right? Snake? No. I still have one more job to do. You can't be serious. <laughs> I'm dead serious, Holly. Snake, no, you can't. Not here. We have to wait till we get out of here first. <laughs> you want me to call you a cab? What? Oh my god, that wasn't funny, Snake. What the fuck? This is Snake. Come in, Charlie. Yo, this is Pilot Charlie. Go ahead, Snake. I've got the cartridge. I'm ready to return to base. Make my way to the rendezvous point now. Roger that. I'll meet you there. Any passengers, bitch? Just one. Blonde with a cute face. But she's mine. Sounds like a dream. 
Sounds like a <laughs> Sounds like a dream. I'm still in the dream. Over and out. I hate that guy. Holly, we've got to run as fast as we can to the rendezvous point. Think you can keep up, even with that chest of yours? Is that a proposition, Snake? It's a proposal. I'll take that as a yes. I don't need excuses. Can I shoot you? Oh. Oh well, maybe next time. By the way, did you s notice the fact I took down this entire base by myself? Again, I think I pretty much usurped Big Boss as the legendary soldier of all time. The best there ever was, right? Well, lucky you could levitate, Holly, otherwise you'd have been dead. Oh, you know, I know you gave me a gun and all, but you could use one, Holly. You have hands. Uh, uh, no! They're coming, Holly! I'll protect you! Shake your chest and your ass to distract them! Oh, we made it. I'm so glad you made it out though, Holly. I need to have some fun after this is all over, before I dump you and then retreat to Alaska. Ugh, yes, delicious. Ugh! It's strange how we never heard about Holly ever again. I guess, like most other women Snake gets involved with, she sticks around for like five minutes and then leaves after she realizes he's not that fun outside of the mission. Like, this might be thrilling and everything. Once you get him back into civilian life, he's boring. What the hell is taking you so long? We're going to be here till Christmas! Oh, this is Charlie! I'm 10 kilometers from the rendezvous point! Hold tight a little bit longer! Over and out, bitch! Hurry! Ah! Holly, you're in the way! Distract them! Oh, for fuck's sake. Holly! I have no... Oh, God. Twofer. Whoa! What is there a trap doing in the middle of the fucking jungle floor? Holly, do something. Don't just follow me. Punch them or something. Throw a grenade. Throw your handbag at them. Is that a handbag? Why are you wearing a handbag? Ugh. God, fuck, die already! Damn it, I'm out of ammo! Snake! What is it, Ari? Jump in that hole. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Careful, watch the hole, guys. Well, this is a bad situation. Yeah! Charlie came through in the end and destroyed the enemy for us. Now it's just a swift getaway. It's the chopper. We're saved! Well, we are. But I'm a traitor, Holly. You're going to hell. Charlie, you're late. Sorry, man, I didn't want to disturb you two love much, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I hate that guy. Think we'll be home in time for Christmas? We'll be home in time for dinner, Snake. Let's go then. I'm looking forward to Christmas dinner. I'm sick of these rations. Ugh. Is that how you're gonna end it? That's how you're gonna end it. Oh my god, Snake, you couldn't even try to flirt with her a little bit? Your jokes suck compared to Big Boss's. And that's it, that is the end of Metal Gear 2. Big Boss, for all we know, is pretty much dead. Great Fox, for all we know, is pretty much also dead. The Metal Gear project that existed is gone. The guy who created Metal Gear is gone. That is one hell of a cool goddamn chopper. And Outer Heaven and Zanzibar Land officially are pretty much done. You know, nobody else is going to try to revive that dream. Not for a while, at least. You'll have noticed Big Boss never mentioned anything about being Snake's father there. But in Metal Gear Solid 1, they retcon it and said that, yeah, Big Boss said to Snake, I'm your father. Which would have been cool to see here, but... They didn't include it, which is a shame. There's so much stuff from the future games that they've added to the mythos of Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake that I wish they would go back and remake the game and add all this stuff in. So this is widely considered one of the best games on the MSX, and I think it still holds up today. It's a lot more forgiving than Metal Gear 1. Far more forgiving. Well, that game was insanely difficult. I'm, there's no way I'm going to get as many fails or deaths in the results screen in this one. So yeah, I would definitely say if you wanted to play one of them, this is the one to play. Metal Gear 1 isn't as necessary to play for the series. This is. It has a lot of plot and characters that will be brought back in Metal Gear Solid 1. It's very important to the series. And it's just a great game. The controls are smoother. You can now crawl. Everything in it is just so much more refined. It's kind of weird though, as successful as this game was, that Kojima wouldn't ever come back to the series for another, I think, 10 years. 10 years between this and Metal Gear Solid 1. That's a long time to keep a franchise dormant. Especially with how much money and how big Metal Gear Solid 1 was to produce at the time. So they took a big gamble on Hideo Kojima with Metal Gear Solid 1, because it could have easily have failed. I certainly had never heard of Metal Gear at all until Metal Gear Solid came out. I knew nothing about this series or these games. It's a good thing they did though. What the? Good work, Snake. Have you thought about coming back to the unit? The nightmares have stopped. I'm a free man now. I see. That's too bad. By the way, about that cartridge. Is it really the one Dr. Marv hid his plans in? Why don't we open it up and find out, guys? No need for that. The cartridge I brought back is Dr. Marv's. No question about it. Just put it in the MSX. All right. Here goes, guys. My god. 0.1 kilobytes? Huh? 
Nothing's happening. What on earth? Of course. Snake was right. There's no doubt about it. This is Dr. Marv's cartridge. What are you talking about? I don't see anything. Here, look closer. Dr. Marv lets his signature on it right there. It says, Kiel Marv. I see it now. It's written backwards. Oh, it is. The Viram 01K is written backwards. Dr. Marv's last performance. He really loved games, didn't he? From the bottom of his heart. Dr. Marv was entangled in a pointless political game, and it cost him his life. Games are dangerous, Holly. But the game he left behind will save us all, right, Snake? Snake? Where'd he go, Colonel? Snake's gone! Snake? Whoa, where's he off to now? Snake? Snake! He promised to take me out to dinner, the son of a bitch! How low can you go? Oh, cool, we're gonna get to see the cast credits at the end as well. Colonel Campbell, in his first role, I guess. It's kind of weird how Colonel Campbell and Solid Snake have such a tight bond with each other, and yet I don't think they ever spent that incredibly long amount of time together. And we never hear from Holly White again, so I guess she just becomes a civilian. George Kastler, who somebody on the channel mentioned looks exactly like that Serbian accordion player that is all over the internet, who I wouldn't actually be surprised if Kojima took the likeness from. Dr. Drago Petrovic Madnar. I guess he just fainted and was rescued by somebody because he actually comes back in a later Metal Gear game to help out one of the characters. Oh, Johan Jacobson, the guy who knew about animals that I didn't bother to contact either. I'm glad I didn't, he looks creaky. Wait a minute. Master Miller was in this game? I missed out on Master Miller? What the fuck? And of course, Kiel Marv and his weird Harry Potter scar on his forehead. Lightning bolt scar. And I bet you couldn't tell, but all these characters were voiced by the exact same person. The same voice actor. I know, shocking, right? Pretty impressive though, I gotta say. But that's how good the voice actor is. He may be the best voice actor of all time, I'm just saying. I gotta say, it was pretty cool of Kojima to use a lot of the characters and details from this game in Metal Gear Solid 1, like Grey Fox and Big Boss, because it was a big risk. But for fans who played through this game, it must have been a hell of a treat to go from this to Metal Gear Solid 1 and see all these characters brought into 3D. Oh, it was a Hind D after all. He really likes the Hind D insanely much. Ah, oh, look at it. Metal Gear D. I guess he liked the Hind D name so much he thought it would work for Metal Gear as well. I think it could have had a better name though. And who else are we forgetting? The guy who breaks up with women by running away without actually telling them. Solid Snake. Oh, here we are. So Original playtime was 3 hours 32 minutes. I think that was similar to the first Metal Gear. Only saved 2 times. Only died 17 times, so it was way easier. Most of those, I think, were due to Big Boss. Alert mode 60 times, so it was just as hard to sneak through. 113 humans killed. Fair enough. And 10's ration used. I got the code name Zebra. I don't know what the fuck that means. It means that I, I blended in? I don't know. I think I did pretty good though. So yes, thank you for watching my Let's Plays of Metal Gear 1 and Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake. A fantastic trip through time into the foundations of where the Metal Gear franchise emerged. As fun as it was revisiting these earlier games in the series, it's even more interesting when you go from these first early missions of Solid Snake to what eventually becomes his last and final mission. Hey kid, I'm your babysitter. What did one breast study the other breast? Don't hang so low, or they'll think we're nuts. <laughs> well, the joke wasn't that good. Oh my lord! I'll fuck you in tonight. He looks better with the bandana. What the fuck? Oh, Snake! It seems I have the upper hand. It was me after all, Snake. I was there in Santa Moses ten years ago. Ah, and I killed your father too. No, you didn't, you little shit. No. I am your father, Snake. I'll be watching you. <coughs> <coughs>